I worship you, Lord God, we worship you. I worship you, you are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around. I worship you, God, we worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. We make a spiritual work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. in the midst of doing memorial stones and it's just uh, an, an incredible uh, Sunday school on the formation of the fellowship that you and I are so privileged to be a part of and uh, Pastor Greg he just made one of his statements that he made is that is that uh, uh, now that you're right with God when a true validating mark that you are right with God is you want to tell somebody about Jesus amen and it is so true it's a biblical principle. It goes all the way back to the Word of God. When you're touched by Jesus, you want to tell somebody. And uh, not only that, amen, but I, it's a true mark of our salvation is when you get saved, what God does is God gives you a language of prayer. And so we have confidence knowing that no matter who you are, uh, you know, 10, 15, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, we have a confidence that when we pray in Jesus' name that we have the attention of heaven. And so that's what we want to do tonight. We want to go before the Lord. We have numbers of prayer requests that, that uh, we want to remember to pray for. I am so happy to see Nancy Starkey in church. Uh, we went by uh, their house uh, this morning after, after the service. Uh, she uh, had some kidney stones, and you know, that's very, very, very painful and just talking to her and, and, and praying for her this morning, 
Um, I, there's no way I wish she was going to be in church tonight, but she's a soldier, amen. And so <laughs> praise God for that, amen. We want to pray for a quick recovery for our sister, amen, full strength, amen, to her kidney, that God would touch her. Uh, also as well, we want to remember to pray for the great nation that we are privileged to be a part of. And so you don't realize, you know, how really patriotic you are until you leave America. Uh, when you leave the United States, it makes you realize how good our country is. We want to pray for the leadership of our country. We want to pray for our president, uh, his, uh, his leadership, also for our soldiers. Uh, we want to pray for baby churches tonight. Amen. Uh, 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 Brother Dave, uh, just getting back preaching for the Herlines. Uh, I was not aware that that the week preceding that revival, there were, uh, the Prescott Church did a miracle crusade, a healing crusade in McNary. And so I had no idea, amen, that uh, Prescott Church did that. But the church of uh, McNary is in their backyard. And so what we want to do is we want to pray that, that, number one, that they receive fruit from the revival with uh, Brother Dave and then also fruit from that crusade. I, I believe Brother Chris Hart did that. And so we want to pray that God would work and move in the, in the White Mountains. Uh, we want to pray for baby James going for heart surgery on Friday. Randy, David, John for salvation. Robert for salvation. Uh, we want to pray for Maria, Elena, Rosanna, and Angel. Uh, we want to pray for Marlena Moreno. Amen. That God would touch her. Uh, we want to pray for Amber Wartz, that God would move upon her, the Ghetto family, the Nader family. We want to pray for Eva Fernandez, uh, Kevin uh, Bareca for healing. We want to pray for Lynn and Shelly Cooter for their salvation. Chris Fuller needs a healing. Uh, the Rice family, we want to pray for Pat McDonald. Amen, a recovery there. Josh Denny for his salvation. Alexis and Anthony, Alyssa and Mr. G for salvation. Uh, Debbie Moran for healing, and then finally David Nowak for salvation and healing. I want to remember to pray for a woman, amen, came into the church, Miss Carol, amen, for a special need that God would work and move upon her behalf. And so, praise God, we've got a long list, at, and you can, you can ask God for yourself too. There's nothing wrong with praying for others, asking God for yourself, amen, pray, uh, Pray that your husband got to make him a millionaire. So praise God. That would be a, that'd be a good prayer to pray. And so let's pray. Let's lift up our voices tonight. We need favor in our baby churches, favor for buildings, that God would open doors for buildings. So I want you to pray. Pray out loud. You notice we pray out loud. Pray. Prayer is vocal. Lift up your voice. Let's ask God for these needs, touching our baby churches. And then as we subside tonight, I want to ask if my brother John Zaretic, please, if you would open us in a word of prayer. Join with me and let's let's get a hold of God tonight. Let's lay a hold. Amen. Turn and greet one another before you're seated. Amen. The Lord bless you tonight.
enemy is defeated, Jesus Christ rose again. The enemy is defeated by the power of God's hand. He has conquered hell. He has set the captive free. Jesus Christ is our commander. In his name there's victory. The enemy is defeated. Jesus Christ is rose again. The enemy is defeated by the power of God's hand. He has conquered hell. He has set the captive free. Jesus Christ is our commander. In his name there's victory. Amen. Praise God. We really truly believe that. Amen. In his name there's victory. And so, uh, you know, whether you've been saved for, you know, six months or you've been saved for, you know, a long period of time, amen, that's, that's the message of the gospel, that's the hope of the gospel. And I'm looking out over this church, and there's just so many of us tonight, that's what we are, we're recipients, man, we, we richly receive, amen, and I, I believe in serving God in the good days, amen, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's in the bad days, amen. That's when you need to uh, have your heart fixed on Jesus. And so I want to take time, welcome everybody out tonight. If you're here this evening, if you're, if you're visiting, we want to welcome you to the Potter's House. We're so glad that you're here. We're going on. Our church has been in the community. Gosh, I think we've been, we've been in the Bullhead, uh, in Bullhead City now for, gosh, going on 50, 55 years, amen. Uh, our church and it's preaching the gospel uh, that's been our mission from day one is preaching the gospel and seeing people saved amen and we're grateful amen to be a part of all that God is doing in our midst and so uh, we had a great time um, I heard the reports amen I'm too old to go to a youth rally amen they would uh, they would card me in the negative way Amen. They said, no, 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 you're too old. Dinosaurs, you guys, you guys belong down the road. But over the weekend, uh, hundreds of people, what they did as teenagers, they gathered in our mother church in Prescott. What I would like to do tonight is if you went to that, and if you went to that, uh, that youth rally, and if you'd like to stand up and give a report, amen, I'd like you to, you know, it's kind of just off the cuff. But if you went... And uh, uh, you'd like to give a report of what you saw? Uh, anybody here want to stand up and give a report? Anybody here? Amen. Want to stand and give a report? And so, yeah, I understand, you know, the worst thing in the world to do is to stand up and have everybody look at you. Amen. But, uh, you know, that's what you were doing in the mirror before you came to church tonight. So nobody wants to stand and give a report. And so uh, hundreds of people went. And so uh, it was a great, great time of evangelism. And not only that, amen, but that play that they had, I didn't get any reports on that play, amen. And uh, what? one at a time, one at a time. Uh, yeah, right. Hold on a minute, amen. I knew if I put enough pressure on them, one of them would stand up, and so... Well, I want to thank God, first of all, for the opportunity opportunity to go to uh, to Prescott for the youth rally. Uh, I had a great time with uh, David's son, Noah, Jay, and some of the Vegas kids. Um, they're including JJ, your grandson, Pastor. Um, I had an amazing time with them. I got to uh, got to meet new people, new youth. It's really inspiring to see other other people my age. And what amazed me the, the most was seeing little kids 10 years old, 12 years old, street preaching, Pre preaching to people 60 years old in the street, just preaching how God changed their life at such a young, at su such a young age. It's really inspiring and makes me want to do better as a Christian. So that was my experience. I'll pass the mic to Jay now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I went there. I had an anxiety attack. I was dealing with anxiety. But I was praying to the Lord to speak to me somehow. 
And so someone stood up, started speaking in tongues, and it got interpreted. And he, like, spoke it into me. And I felt the chain break off of me. Amen. Brother Jeremiah, you're too young and too handsome to be having anxiety attacks. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Uh, every uh, every level of ministry in our church, you know, from uh, from teenagers, amen, uh, on up, amen. Appreciate all that God is doing. We have just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, just reminding you all week long, our our main announcement is our revival, and so uh, I believe we still have a good stack of flyers that are there on the back table. And, and I, just, I just trust that what you do is you understand the importance. God honors labor. And so we had a lot of outreach before this revival. But uh, during the revival, amen, please grab some of those flyers and, uh, and be a witness. Tell somebody about Jesus. And so those flyers are available. And so uh, you want to make sure that you take notice of that. Also, women's prayer tomorrow. Amen at noon, and so you want to make sure that uh, you are aware of that. Amen. If our ushers would come, we want to receive the Lord's offering tonight. Encourage you, as always, to be to be faithful and to be diligent. Amen. It's one of the great principles of the Word of God is to be diligent in anything. And and uh, if there's anything in your life that you want to be diligent at, it's, it's in your service for the kingdom of God. Amen. And you're giving tonight. And so let's give. Let's be liberal. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. I'd like to ask if my brother Jim Lee, if you would ask God's blessing on the offering. Of the mercies of the Lord forever I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness with my mouth. Will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations? I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Praise God. It's uh, a pleasure when Pastor Alvin Smith came and I was a young man. Uh, I remember seeing him and observing him, hearing him in the prayer room. And I, you've heard my testimony that when I was young, I hit a tree snow skiing. And the way that the, uh, the health professionals treated me made me want to be a firefighter, which I became Sunday. And I would tell you the same thing. This man made a mark on me as a child. And this is one of the reasons that I wanted to be a preacher. Amen. Because Pastor Alvin. And so I want to invite him to the pulpit. Let's give him a warm welcome. <laughs> Bless the Lord. It's good to be in the house of God tonight and see you. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 2, if you will, verse 20 through 25, as I consider my assignment tonight. Genesis is, is, is really my favorite book in the Bible, for it, it, it reveals to us how God thinks, that God is a thinker. He is a deliberator, and in creation, he brings revelation and insight and to how we should live as Christians and how we should conduct ourselves. And so 
Let's read that if we if we can tonight. Genesis chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. I first want to ask the question, what is a gift? Someone said to show favor to someone, to honor on occasion, or to make a gesture of assistance. What we learn is that a gift always reflects the giver. And so in Genesis now, God is going to teach us something about this. Let's read together Genesis chapter 2, verse 20 through 25. You can put that up there for me, Brother Jimmy. On the count of three, let's read together. One, two, three. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they and we're not ashamed. I want to preach a sermon I've called Single But Not Alone. And my first thought is being alone. What we have just read was the first wedding ceremony in the Bible. And actually, it begins uh, in verse 18 with an appraisal of his creation. So he creates this man, he puts him in, in this utopia of excellence, and he stands back from it. And in verse 18, God says these words. He says that it's not good that man should be alone. And so if you read those words, it's kind of odd because God is nothing but good. There is, there is no, there's no darkness in God. The Bible says in him, in his turning, there's no shadow in his turning. When God turns... You and I turn, we cast a shadow, but God, there's no shadow. Every, every turn with God is light. He's light through and through. He's God. But when he created man now, the Bible says, uh, he takes observation of this, he appraises this, uh, and God said, it's not good that this man be alone. What is God saying now? He looks at man and he says, it's not good. It simply expresses a, a fundamental truth that which God did not put us here to be alone. God did not create you to be alone. And so if you like being alone, God wants you to know that's not his intention. The word good means well-being or to be healthy. And God said it's not healthy for you to be alone. It's not good for your well-being to be alone. So if you're given to a... a if you're given to a hermit-like existence, understand it's not from God. He did not create you to be alone. He did not create you to live on an island. He did not create you just to get up and, and walk out of church real quick. God created you for relationship. And God looks at it and God said, this, this is not a good thing. This, is, this does not reflect who I am. It does not reflect my nature at all. And so therefore, if you're given to this kind of existence, it's not from God. However, the question I would like to ask tonight, how could Adam be alone if God was there? If God was there now and he is walking with Adam, and he is with Adam, and God assesses the situation, God says he's alone. How can I be alone and God is there with me? Because many of us say, God, he's my everything. He's my husband. He's my everything. But we learn something about this. God makes the assessment, and God says, even though I'm with this man, there's something about this man that he is alone. 
And it simply speaks to the nature of God. It speaks, amen, to who God is. See, I cannot have a relationship with God in a physical sense. I can't touch God with my hands. I can't see God with my eyes. So physicality now, I have no relationship. I can only have a relationship with God spiritually. It is spirituality now that connects me to God. I'm connected to God through faith. God's a spirit. I can only access God. God through my spirit through faith. I can't have a physical relationship with God. Therefore, God said, there's a side of man, a man that cannot access me. There's a side of man now, his human side, a man, his physical side, a man cannot be satisfied by me. Stay with me. It's very important now when you begin to understand this. In layman's term, part of you that will not be fulfilled no matter how saved you are, God was there and he was still alone so Adam's relationship with God is different than his relationship with the animals and the world around him so here's the picture now he creates this man he puts him here and then he creates these animals and in Genesis chapter 2 I think it's verse 19 and 20 we read these words right here the Bible says that Adam now he begins to name all the beasts of the field. He's, 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 he's named these beasts, and, and, and as you see it, he's, he's named them, and he's named them two by two. He's naming two lions. He's naming two giraffes, two hippopotamus. I don't know how he came up with that name. And so he's naming all these, these, these elephants, and he realizes something. As, he, as he's naming them, there are two of them. And he looks at himself, and it's only one of him. He says, hold on for a second. This ain't right. You got two hippopotamuses. You got two lions, but you only have one me. And he realizes there was no connection that he had with those around him. And so he realized now he found nothing that was not suitable for him. That's the word now. It was not suitable for him, and therefore, he's alone. So the question then, what does it take for him not to be alone? God brings a hint at this now. But for Adam, there was not found a help me for him in the King James Version. Translation is, there was no one suitable. There was no one that was appropriate for Adam. So suitability now in relationship eliminates loneliness. You can have bodies around you and still be alone if the body is not suitable. You can, you can go from relationship to relationship, but if that person is not suitable and that person is not appropriate for you, you will still be alone. Yeah, and, it, and it's not just, listen, and it's not just, uh, amen, in a married a marriage situation. It is also in a situation just with friendship. You have to have people that you hang out with that are suitable for you, people that are appropriate for you. And God now is, is going to let you know that what eliminates this loneliness is suitable and appropriate relationships. See, compatibility and suitability is not one and the same. Compatibility speaks to sharing commonality. So you have these, uh, you have these dating sites uh, uh, that people go on and they're trying to find someone that's comparable, uh, someone that's, that, that has commonality with them, uh, someone, you know, that does the same thing. They like to ski and they like to do this and so I like to do this, so therefore we are compatible. But just because you're compatible doesn't mean you're suitable. Oh, stay with me, I'm coming where you live. Uh, suitability speaks to one um, who has been cut to fit. It's like when I put a, I got a suit. It's cut to fit me now. It is made, amen, and shaped in all the right places uh, to be able to fit you uh, and to be able to be appropriate for you. Uh, God now, amen, begins to show us how he moves in the earth. This is why I like Genesis and, and how he works in creation. Adam was not alone because he was abandoned or rejected. Adam was alone or single because he was special. He was a gift and he was unlike anything of the of the other creation amen he could not just join himself to anyone because God made him unique 
Let me show you what I'm saying. God made him unique. You, you're not single because, amen, no one likes you. You're not single. No, no, no. God wants you to know, amen, your singleness has to do with that you are a gift. He has made you a gift. He has made you special. Amen. You're not just, amen, just a part of the creation. You are a crown of the creation. God is simply saying, I created you unlike anything else. I gave you a body, soul, and a spirit. You're not only equipped to have a relationship with God, but you're equipped to have a relationship with yourself. He gave you a soul to be self-conscious. He gave you a soul, amen, to have feelings and emotions. But he also gave, amen, you a body to have world consciousness, to have relationship with people around you. You're different than all the other creation because you can have a relationship with God, a relationship with yourself and with others. You special, man. God says, I made you special. I, I cut you special. I, I designed you special. So you need to understand that. It is very important. Now, consider with me getting into this flow of God now. God is the only one that I know who gives you a gift that rivals your affection for him. God will give you a gift, and he'll bless you with something, and you will love that gift more than the giver. He'll, he'll give you something uh, and, and bless you. He's the only one I know that'll give you something, uh, amen, and bless you with it, and you'll turn around and love that more than you love God. Uh, in Scripture, we read about Lucifer and Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. Lucifer was given the gift of personal beauty. Lucifer looked at himself and he began to love himself more than he loved God. He began to talk about, I will do this and I will do that. And he forgot about what God gave him. God gave him the gift. God gave him the ability. God gave him the creativity. God gave him all that he had. But the Bible says in the end, he began to worship himself more and love himself more than he loved God. Uh, in Romans chapter 1, verse 25, uh, Paul literally brings this indictment upon the entire human race. This is what he says. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worship and serve the things God created instead of the creator himself, uh, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. You cannot allow the gifts or the gifting of God to become a priority over your love for him. God will bless you. You see people get blessed all the time and you never see them again. Uh, God gives them and open doors for them and, and, and just blesses them immensely and they forget about the goodness of God. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 21 through 23, it happens to Adam. God becomes the first surgeon. This is what God does. Let me show you. Let me show you. He, he, he looks at Adam. He says it's not good for you to be alone. So God puts on a surgeon gown. He becomes a, an anesthesiology, I you say. And he puts this brother to sleep, right? He puts him to sleep. He's knocked out. And God starts operating. And God reaches into the man and he pulls out a rib. And he fashions this woman for him. I said, I said beginning suitability means you're cut in all the right places. <sighs> Open him up. Take, and he begins to fashion this woman. Mm. He wakes this man, this man wakes up and he sees Eve. We don't know how long they were single, but we know before they were married, they were single. Before they were married now, God now is interacting with them. I love this. This is God that we serve. He's interacting with them. He has already reached into the ground and fashioned man now. And man has walked with him in the cool of the day. And man has had a relationship with God. He was single, single him and God had a relationship. Before he knew anything about a woman, he knew God. Then God brings him a gift, say gift. He brings him a gift and God becomes the first preacher. He conducts the first wedding. God's bad, ain't he, y'all? The first, first preacher, first wedding. Did you take care of you know that? And listen, I can't wait to get to heaven and see video, I'm telling you. First, first wedding. Because the first wedding. And they come together and they're married. And then the rivalry starts. Eve begins to rival Adam's love for God. He gives him a gift. He forgets about the giver, he forgets about the creator, and he begins to love the 
the creation or the creature. And this is a problem. And so, and so it's, it's important now to understand this. When Adam saw the woman, immediately there was a rivalry between God and man. And God's design is very simple. It's all about place and position. Whatever he creates, provision flows out of what he creates unto what he creates. This is how God does. Let me, let me come down here. Whatever God creates now, provision flows out of what God creates unto what God creates. He created a garden. And in that garden, it was, a, it was a place of excellence, a beautiful place. It had every, every tree that you could think of. It had guava trees and apple trees and orange trees, and, and it had all kinds of uh, vegetables, cilantro. Can I get a cilantro witness in here? Uh, uh, some collard greens, and you know what I'm saying? It had everything that you can think of that was there, and plums and grapes. It was beautiful. Squash, everything you can think of. Right at his fingertips, whatever he creates, provision flows out of what he creates unto what he creates. He puts man there, and provision flows unto man. As long as man is following God, provision flows from God unto man. That's a good thing, huh? As long as you follow God, provision. Then what he does, he reaches into man, and he pulls what out of man? The woman. And he creates the woman. This, as the woman follows the man, provision flows from God to the man, to the, the woman. The woman had no need for nothing. All she had to do was follow her man as her man is following God. Provision is flowing, man. It's a good day. Everything's happening. God is moving. Then what happens? The Bible says she becomes pregnant and she has children. He pulls the children out of the woman, and the woman brings provision to the child. Because I said, everything he creates, provision flows out of what, what he creates unto what he creates. Huh? And the mama takes care of the children. Can all the mama say amen? As long as the man is following God, the woman is following the man, the man following God, the children following the woman, the woman following the man, the man following God, there's provision. It's all good, man. That's how it works. That's place. That's, that's Genesis. That's the heart of God. As long as I follow God, and listen, anybody that's done that can stand up and wave their hands and say, thank you, Jesus. They've seen the provision of God. It just flows as long as you're following God. And that woman's following that man. It's divine order. But here's what happens. One day, Eve is walking through the garden. And she's walking. Back then, the serpent had feet. He was walking too. And he saw Eve. So what's up, Eve? How you doing today? She said, well, it's a, it's a good day, you know. God is good. And she's walking in. He says, well, did God tell you, you know, about that tree over there? And she said, yeah, I can't eat that tree. And he said, well, he didn't really say that. You know, God, God is good now. You know, he, he give you everything. And she started listening to the serpent or the creature over the creator. Oh, yeah. And then she's deceived, and she eats the fruit, and she goes back to who? Adam. And she tells Adam everything the serpent said. And instead of Adam said, hold up, girl, what's, what's wrong with you? You lost your mind. Don't you know what God said? Don't you? But instead of him listening to the creator, he listened to the creature. And we're here today. That's how it happens. When you stop following God. When God stops being the center of your life. Because as long as you follow God, provision flows. I'm telling you, I've seen it. Provision flow. That's, this is, that's why I love our fellowship so much. The years of people serving God. The years of churches. The years of relationship. You, don't, you ain't got this everywhere. The years of it. Why? Because when you follow God, provision flows from God unto what he creates. Somebody give God praise for it. Come on. Come on. I'm coming. I'm almost there. Come on. Stay with me. Stay with me. And so now we begin to understand this, this, this success. See, the first thing they taught me when I was in the military, they taught me how to march. That's when they taught me. 
excuse me, they taught me how to march, how to follow. They taught me distance and space and how to stay in your place. Because we are all leaders in our own right, but you cannot lead if you don't know how to follow. Oh, you can't lead if you don't know how to follow. And so what they, what they taught us is how to follow, how to march, how to follow. And they taught us how to follow. And when we learn how to follow now, we can lead somebody else. And they taught us that distance in the space, not stepping on people, my God, but having that distance, having that cadence, amen, to have space to be able to lead somebody somewhere. And if you ever see an army marching, it's a beautiful thing. You see the synergism, you see the harmony, you see the symphonio of them just moving together in cadence. It's a beautiful thing when you see a family in order, my God, when you see a church in order, discipleship flowing because, because you got to learn how to follow. God did it in the garden. In the garden. He says, listen, if you want to do something for me, you got to learn how to follow, man. You want to have a good uh, marriage, you got to learn how to follow. You want to have a good church, you got to learn how to follow. Best thing ever happened when, when, I, when I was 17 years old and I left home. Never forget when I was, I, I just graduated from high school. I graduated on a Thursday. On a Friday, I was walking down the, down the driveway, and my daddy was doing some work on the car, and he, he pushed me on the car. He said, what you going to do now, son? I said, well, I'm going to the house and get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You want something? But that's not what he was saying. He was saying, last night you graduated from high school. Yeah, today you graduated from this house. You got to go. And I joined the Air Force. And the first thing they taught me, you got to learn how to follow, son. Ain't about you no more. Ain't about where you want to go and what you want to do. My God. And I learned how to follow. And I'm still following. Oh, you got to listen, because I want to go to heaven. I want to see Jesus. You had to understand the, the, the importance of this truth tonight. Herein lies the issues of brokenness. Adam and Eve, they follow the serpent. They both choose the creature over the creator. And here is where the trouble begins. In Genesis 3.19, the Bible says that these words right here, Genesis 3.19, we read these words. Throw that up there right here. In the sweat of your face shall you eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. He says, in the sweat of your face, in the sweat of your brow, it tells me this. Anytime you find yourself struggling, anytime you find yourself sweating in your relationship, what you need to do is check your place and check your order. Anytime you say, man, I just, I just can't live with them no more, you need to check if you're in the right place. You need to make sure that you're following in your place. Because when you find yourself struggling in your marriage, especially if you're in the house of God, struggling in your relationship and you mad at it, you got to make sure that you are in line, amen, with the person you're following and with God. Oh, stay with me. See, see, you have, you, you've stepped out of the flow. Listen, Genesis is my favorite book because God reveals to us what it takes to regain the flow. When God created Adam and Eve, he held them in his hands. Genesis 2, 7, he reaches down into the dust of the ground and he breathed into the nostrils of him and he became a living nephesh. He became a living soul. And then Genesis 2, 22, amen, he, 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 reached into his side and he fashioned this woman. And so I said before, they were single before they were married. And it simply means this. You don't want to have a relationship with anyone that the handprint of God hadn't been on. You want to make sure that God's hands been on that joker's life. Just because he come, his mom and daddy come to church don't mean he know Jesus. Oh, I just said a lot right there. Yeah. You, 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 you better make sure that God has, has something to do with him. God has been working in his life. God reached into the ground and he fashioned Adam's life. 
He has to have something to do with you. Remember, you are single because you are special. And in order for God to tie a bow on you and present you as a gift, he must first make you a gift to yourself. You must have you must have something to invest in someone else's life. In, I, I'll prove it to you. Proverbs 18, 22 says these words right here. I'll prove it to you. You must have something to invest in someone else's life. Throw that up there. Proverbs 18, 22. And the Bible says these words right here. When a man, you got that? Help him, Jesus. The Bible says, help Jimmy, Lord. Help him back there. Oh, it's behind me. Oh, it's like it. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Okay. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. When he found her, she was what? No, 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 no. When he found her, it says what? She's what? No, no, when, he who finds a, when he found, when he found her, she was a wife. She was a wife. It simply means she had wife qualities. Oh, yeah. She, yeah, God has been putting some stuff in her, see. You want somebody that's got some wifey qualities. Because just because you put a ring on her finger, it, it, it ain't going to turn into a wife. God has to have something to do with you putting some stuff inside of you, investing some stuff that when you see her, you see that she's a servant. She, you see that she cares about people. You see that she has love flowing through her. She has the qualities of a wife. God has made some investments in her life. Oh, stay with me, church. Listen, no, remember, a gift reflects the giver. Matthew 4, 19, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you. He's making you a fit. He's making you a gift. He's making you something special. That's why you got to follow God, because he's making you into a man of God. He's making you, amen, into a young woman of God. He's making you. He's forming you. He's feeling you. He's doing things in your life that'll never happen until you get to that place of real pursuit and real hunger and thirst and you say you know what I'm tired of the world now I gotta give my life to God I gotta start investing myself because I should be more than this I should be better than this I need to have something to give to somebody I can't just say my name is Jimmy gimme give gimme give gimme give I gotta have something amen to put in somebody else's life gotta have something amen that I can invest in somebody. God, I want to be more like you. Jesus says, follow me and I'll make you. I'll make you into a man of God. I'll make you something you never thought you would be. I'll take your places you never gone before. Follow me and I will make you amen, someone that's fruitful in God. Give him praise for it. Woo! Stay with me. Man. Mm. I'm going to show you what I'm saying. I'm going to preach myself half. Stay with me. See, it's during the single years that your stock portfolio with God is being developed. It's, it's, it's the single years. When I was single, that's when God, I used to sit on the front row in the single years. Young man, hungry for God. God was feeling my life. God was forming me. He was taking his hands and putting on the clay of my life and forming, tearing things away, putting things there, making me again. My God, it was during the single years. The single years are the most exciting years. It's the years that you get to fall in love with God. It's the years you get to know God and he begins to open the eyes of your understanding. He begins to bring you into a place you've never been before. You begin to understand that you're not an accident or an incident, but you were divinely created by God. For such a time as this, God rescued you. Them single years, my God. God began, amen, to bring expansion in your life. Mind expansion, heart expansion, soul expansion. God begins to work in you and through you for his glory. You begin to know things you never knew before. Read the Bible. It becomes real to you. Single. Being developed by God for a purpose. Say with me. See, most of all, you know what God wants to fill you with most of all? Most of all, 
His spirit, yes, but something else. What does God want to give you most of all? It's a four-letter four word. Love. But not just any love. Agape love. Listen. Agape love. Agape love is not origin here. See, you have eros love, which is romantic love. You have filio love, which is, which is brotherly love. But agape love is origin with God. It, 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 there is no, there is no, there's no source of it in the earth realm. It only comes from God. And so what it means is this. Let me, let me give you a definition of it. It means this right here. Agape, it embraces a profound sacrificial love. Here it is. That transcends and persists regardless of circumstance. It, it transcends and persists regardless of the circumstance. It means that even when you are crazy and you, and you are cussing God, he still loves you. Let me, tell you how, let me tell you how deep the love of God is. People are going to go to hell and God's still going to love them. That's the copy love of God. It never stops. It never stops. He says, this is what I want to put inside of you. Because if I can put this inside of you, even when you're going through a hard time, you got something that can sustain you. Ah, yeah. See, 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 listen. See, see, you're not loving your wife with your love. You're loving her. God is loving her through you with agape. And even when your heart is broken, you can still. That's why some people, man, I don't see how you do it, man. And you, I, I know it ain't, it's the agape. You can take a licking and keep on ticking. It's the agape that moves through you. Oh, my God. That you're loving God with God's love. You're loving people with God's love. Amen. It's the love of God that constrains me. Paul says when I want to get up, it's the love of God that constrains me. Woo! It takes me to a whole different level of living. Say with me, church. I'm coming where you live. And so listen. And so see, because real men love God, he is forming you in you a single heart, a single focus, that the flow of his love, his agape will never stop because real men love God. Real men love God. They have that stained love. They have that kind of love that persists. Amen. They don't give up. Amen. They don't throw in the towel. They can feel bad and they can go through stuff, but they keep bouncing back because the love of God constrains us. Oh, I'm almost done. God's desire for Adam and Eve is that the two would become one. Two become one. Huh? Having one vision, one single focus. Because somewhere along the way, it became double vision. And whenever you have double vision, you have division. And if you don't deal with division, you have divorce. Yeah. One, one single heart, one single focus, <laughs> one God, one faith, one baptism, one, one, woo, one, not, not all this stuff. I lead the choir and I always tell them, I want to hear one voice. It's like 50 people that I don't want to hear 50 voices. I just want to hear one. Huh? It ain't about you. I know you sound good, sweet, but it ain't about you. One. God says, it ain't about one. If I can get you to touch and agree, my God, I could turn the world upside down. And listen, I can prove it to you. And they were in one place, in one. I can't make it up. In one accord. And when they were in one accord, the power of God. Jeremiah 18, 2, as I close. Jeremiah is invited to the potter's house. And he learns the success of all human relationship. He learns that it, it all origins in God's hands. I started off the text by saying, God reached in the ground, he fashioned the man. It all started in his hands. So, so, so he's at the potter's house. You heard the story. And, and, and he's, making, he's making a vessel of clay. And he tells me, he says, I want you to go, and I just want you to go and watch. 
Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the wheel, a vessel at the wheel. He says, don't say nothing, just watch. And as he's making this vessel at the potter's house, all of a sudden, verse 4, the clay, it was coming to shape. Then all of a sudden, it broke in his hands. And you would think, you would think it was the potter's fault, right? Because he's working on it. But we all know that the potter is who? God. Okay, the potter's God, and you and I are the clay. He teaches us that inherent in the clay is the problem. Inherent in your clay, in my clay, is all kind of stuff. When he puts his hands on the clay, all he does is reveal all the stuff that's inside the clay. All the rocks and all the, all the junk that's in the clay. Can I get a witness? All the stuff that you can't see with the naked eye, he puts his hand in the hand, just reveal what's in the clay. And you would think if you had a broken piece of vase or pottery, if it's broken, you would do what with it? You throw it away. It's no good. Just throw that in the trash can. Start over. But God doesn't throw stuff away. The Bible says he takes the same piece of pottery and he makes it again into another vessel. He takes the same album, broken, broke, busted, and disgusted, and can't be trusted. He takes the same life and he makes it again another. Because everything origins in his hands. And what he's telling us, though there's brokenness, though there's collapse, shame and hurt, grief and pain, God says all you got to do is stay in the potter's hands. You'll, listen, you'll learn that the potter never removes his hands. Listen, God never leaves us, we leave him. And all you got to do is get in his hands. And if you get in his hands, he'll make you again another. He, the Bible says, as it seemed good to the potter to make, and you think that God is through with you, but he is a restorer of the breach. He can put things back together again. Hump the dump that sat on the wall, and he had a great fall, and all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put hump the back together again. But God can put him back together again, and God can put you back together again, and he can put your marriage back together again. He can put your children together again. Oh my God, he can do it. It's all in the potter's hands. See, listen, if you, if you want to be a fit, if you want to be a fit, Jesus says, come and follow me and I will make you. Uh, I'll make you. If you want God to bless your life, if you want to be that one that receives the provisions from God, to be able to bless others, he says, come and follow me. He says, I dare you, come follow me. Jesus would walk by people, man, say, come follow me. I'll make you in this home. And they would look at him and get up and follow him. And almost 40 years ago, he walked by me and said, come follow me. I said, okay, Lord. And I, 18 years of following the Lord, following God. And he, he's here tonight, and his hands are like this. And he says, you got to come back to my hands because you got some breaches. You got some brokenness. You got some stuff. See, 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 let me ask you a question. See, who can use a broken vase? If you put water in a broken vase, what happens to it? Huh? It leaks out. Listen, if you're broken, no matter how much I love you, it's not enough. You say, ain't no love in that church. Oh, that, no, 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 it ain't got nothing to do with the church. You're broken. And no matter how much I try to love you, no matter how much people try to do for you, it'll never be enough. You can go from that relationship to that relationship. You'll never be a fit until you come back to his hands. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. God bless you. God bless you.
You might be single, but you are not alone if you stay in his hands. Thank you. Thank you for your patience tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. You've come tonight. Maybe as a friend of a friend. Maybe someone invited you. You possibly got a flyer. Maybe you're a neighbor, a classmate, a relative. And you've come tonight and you say, Pastor, it's like you were speaking to me because I feel so lonely. I feel so all alone in this huge world with all these people. I feel lonely in a crowd. And I sit here tonight and I say, Pastor, you know what? I don't want to feel like this no more. I don't want to live my life on an island anymore. Because it's, it's almost like I've, I've, I've got comfortable being a hermit. God says it's not healthy. It's not good for your well-being. It's not my intention. I did not create you to be alone. I created you to have relationship. An ultimate relationship is with God. And you say, you know what, Pastor? I want to be like Adam, man. He walked in the cool of the day with God. He walked with the Creator. He had a relationship with the Creator. A lot of us have relationship with creatures and people but we don't know God. And you say tonight, Pastor, I've been here and there, man. I'm getting older every day. I made some bad decisions along the way. And because of that, there's some brokenness in my life. I'm just leaking, man. I'm leaking. And no matter how much I put in, it's not enough. It's not enough. And people even tell you that, man, I can't do enough for you. And you say tonight, you know what? I need his hands. I need, I need spirit life. I need to be born again. I need to be saved. I need to be washed in his blood. I need Jesus. If that's you, I want you to lift your hands and say, pray for me, Pastor. I've come. God bless you. Lift your hands quickly, quickly. Just lift it up. Join these. Lift it up. Join these. You've come. You're a backslider. And you say, you know what? I'm in trouble, Pastor. I'm in so much trouble because I'm just, I'm desperate for stuff. Lift your hands to God. Say, pray for me. I'm desperate. I got a desperation. God bless y'all. God bless you. Anyone else? Join these. Join these tonight. You've come. And you say, I just need Jesus, Pastor. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm a backslider. I'm, I'm, my heart's been broken. I've been, I've been walked out on. I've been left. I've been uh, abandoned. And I feel all alone. And that you tonight, I want you to lift your hands. Come, God bless you. I want you to get up out of your seat and come. I want to pray for you. Just come right now. Some people are going to come. Just come. Come right now. God bless you. Come on. Come on. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. Amen. Bless you. Just kneel down right here. She's she going to pray with you right here. Amen. My sister Shelly is going to pray for, with you. She's going to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Just come on. Every Christian tonight. You say, you know what, Pastor? Just that part of following. That following part, that pursuing part is where I need to be. Because I, I'm not really following. I come to church, but I'm not really following and pursuing God and in my place. That people can follow me because we're all a leader in our own right. We all lead people, no matter what level it is. It, 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 it could be children. It could be on our jobs. We're all examples. People will follow things that we do and we say. And you say, you know what? I want to I wanna be that person. I want to get in step with God. I want to be in the cadence of God. I want to be in one accord. 
Others of you, you say, you know what, Pastor, there's some brokenness in my life. And there's some, you know, and I get upset about stuff quickly. I get, I, I find myself just kind of going on a Ferris, a Ferris wheel. And I'm just going around in a circle. And I, I, it seems like I get over stuff, but I go right back into it. And, and the reason for that is, God says, I need to put my hand on your life and bring some healing and some wholeness. I need you to have a relationship with my hand again. I need you, I need you to come to a place where you surrender to my hand and to my direction, to my touch to my counsel for your life. And you say, you know what, I just, I want to get in his hands because I need God to fill me with agape. That I can love people. That I can reflect his nature in the earth. That he can take me and pour me in places and his glory will fill the earth. That's what I want for my life. I want to be that husband that leads my wife and my family and provision flows from God to me to them. That's what I want to be. Those that, that want to be married say, you know what? I want to be a fit. I want to be developed as a, as, a, as a disciple, as a young man, young woman. I want God to God, make me a fit. If you got to cut me, cut me. If you got to shape me, shape me. But as a young man, young woman, the best years of my life, those single years is where God is making an investment in, my, in the portfolio of my spirit. And I want to open the altar. I want you to come find a place to pray and lay hold of God at the altar right now because it's time, man. This is time for us just to be followers, followers again, disciples again. It's, 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 it is, you know what? It is elementary, but it's profound because we never stop. We never stop following as we worship. I worship you. You are here in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. I worship. Oh, let's get some words. You are here working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Ah, yeah, yeah. Go work. My God, who you are, all oh, we make Co-worker, yeah. My God, you are. Co-worker, yeah. My God, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, yeah. Co-worker. Yeah, that is who you are. That is who you are. I know that is, that is who you are. are. We made a bow mind, oh God. You are. That is who you we are. love you, we love you, Jesus. That is who you are. Yeah. Even when I don't see it, yeah, yeah, even, even when I don't see it, you working, working. Even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it, see that you're working, yeah. Even when I don't feel that you're working, you never stop. You never, never, never stop, even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see that you work. Always working. Your hand is working. I never stop working. Even when I don't see it. You're working. Even when I don't feel that you're working. Never stop. 
never stop working. We make a we make miracle work. Yeah. My God. Say away, say away. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Give me some money up here. Yeah, that is, that is who you are. That is who you are. Yeah. Oh, that is who you are. You are. That is who you are. Hallelujah, that is. Give him praise. Just give him praise right where you are. Give him glory. Give him glory. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. See, we will. I feel fresh anointing tonight for people as you follow him. The woman who had the issue of blood, she came and, and she touched him on the hem of his garment. It was, it, was a, it was a move to surrender and to follow. And she went low and she says, Jesus, I, I just want to, I want to touch you, but I also want to follow you. And the Bible says something left Jesus. Power left Jesus. Somebody touched me. It wasn't just a regular touch, but it was a touch of, of commitment. And I feel that, I feel that tonight for a lot of people. You say, you know what? I want to make that commitment to follow. I want, you know, I just want, I want to make that commitment again. To just get back in line and just follow. Because there are people following you. You don't even realize it. People following you. You're still here. You're still serving. Out of all you've gone through, all the ups and the downs, all the struggles, all the setbacks, all the, all the feeling of being kind of abandoned or looked over, and you're still following. There are people who are backslidden, there are people that are not saved, and they're watching. You can trust it. They're watching. They're watching. And one day they're going to come up through those doors, and they're going to see you still here following. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to get in line. And they're going to start. That's what's going to happen. That's how God works. He just looks for faithful people. Who can find a faithful man? Who can find a woman that's following? Who can find her? Her price is far beyond the price of rubies. Who can find a faithful man, a valid man, a good man? Find someone following. They're right here. They're right here in this house. And you say, you know what? I just want to recommit to that. I want to get back in that place now. I want to, I want to have that kind of heart pursuit of God again. I want to get in my place. If that's you, I want you to come. We're going to pray right now before we go. We're going to pray because I feel the fresh anointing. I feel an anointing. I feel a freshness. My sister right here, I feel a fresh anointing on you. Fresh anointing, blessing of God. I just feel the oil of God is going to be on your life. Just God's going to just give you just, just, just a wonderful fruitfulness in your own spirit. Uh, lift your hands to God. I'm going to pray. Father, I thank you for this congregation. I thank you, Lord, for these lives. I thank you for those that come tonight, Lord, to commit themselves, Lord, to the pursuit of you who will put the cre creator over the creature. I come against every strategy of the enemy, God, every spirit of heaviness, every spirit of loneliness, God, the feeling of being passed by, the feeling of being not wanted, Lord, the feeling of being invaluable. I pray, God, that you would move by your spirit right now, that you would let everyone here know, God, that they are not an accident or an incident, but they have been divinely created by you but they are children of the King. And I pray for a special anointing upon this congregation. I pray, God, that you'd open the windows of heaven in such a way, God, that they would know, God, that you have visited them, that, they, that you shall touch them this week in powerful ways, that you shall bring open doors and, and Lord, and favor God. You shall cause the words that they speak not to fall to the ground. You shall give them, God, a new zeal, a new fire.
You shall birth within them dreams and visions, God. Oh, open the windows of heaven like never before. For you are the giver, God, and let the gift that you give them reflect your nature. Reflect your goodness, God. Let there be, Lord, a peace that they never had before that shall sustain them. Give them sweet sleep, God. Give them strength. Give them restoration. Let fire burn in their bellies again, God. Oh, God, let the love of God, the agape love of God, flow through their homes and their marriages. Lord, and their children, God, raise them up for such a time as this. Have you called us, God? These are our days. These are the best days of our lives. Let, the, let us live them in fullness in your favor. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Give him praise right now. Hallelujah. There's an anointing on you. There's an anointing on you. God has not forgotten you. The anointing on you. Oh, He's holding you up. He's holding you up. And God says, you just expect it. Expect it. He's just he's expectancy. You've had children. God said, expect it. I'm going to birth some wonderful things in your life, said God. Uh, even things that you haven't even thought of, I'm going to do them for you. Because my hand is on your life. <laughs> uh, I'm going to restore oh, all that has been lost. That You, you feel that, you know what, I just I, I feel like I just missed something. And God says, I'm going to do for you exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. In Jesus' name, <laughs> yes, he will. Yes, he will, he will, he will. <laughs> I feel God right now. Yes, he will. I feel God directing people right now. God's going to direct your steps. He's going to order your steps in his way. Oh, yes. He's going to order your steps. He's going to, he said, listen, don't be worried. Don't let fear get you. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall rise up. God says you're going to rise like you've never risen before. You're going to rise, I'm telling you, in him. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. And you need to say, God, my life's in your hands. Here it is, in Jesus' name. Wholeness and soundness and peace. I leave with you in Jesus' name. My goodness. He will, he will, he will, he will, uh, Oh, my goodness. Don't you never think God has, has made some kind of mistake? He reached in the ground, and he fashioned him. And I said, God, keep your hands on me, man. Don't take your hands off me. And if I ever get out of your hands, suru me. <laughs> Bring me back. Because we can't live without his hands, man. Go down to the potter's house and watch how he works on the wheel. Go down to the potter's house, working in you. I'm telling you, new thing. God's going to do a new thing. I'm telling you, a new thing. He's going to open the eyes of your understanding as you begin to say, God, take my life and use it. Let me finish well. Yeah, yeah. Let me finish well, Lord. There it is. Woo, there it is. In your spirit, me finish well. Strength. Revival in your soul. Revival in your soul. There it is. Oh, that's God touching you. In your spirit, go free. Oh, my goodness. Man, I love this. I love you, church. I'm telling you. Woo, I tell you, man. Every time I come up in here. Oh, the God that we serve. You got to love him first, though. You got to love him first. Then provision flows. I'm telling you, that's how it works. He created Adam. You know what God created Adam for? Himself. He didn't create, listen, the Bible says that the woman was created for, the, you better get it right. She created for the man. I say, the, 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 the order of things is so powerful. And if you can just get that order. 
And, and, and to me, the woman is the, is the most special because she, she didn't have to do anything. All she had to do was just follow her man. And the man had to follow God. Huh? Protection for the woman. Covering. Hey, the God that we serve. So this week, revival, man. Revival. Revive my soul again. Revive my soul feel God right now. This young man right here. I want you to come. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, man. Hallelujah. Ah, God's going to touch you, son. He's already touching you. You're like, what's going on in here? What's going on? God is going to touch you and do something special in your life. What's your name? Isaiah, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for Isaiah, God. Put your arms around him, God. Hold him close, oh God. Let him know you love him, Jesus. He's not alone, Lord. Raise him up for your glory. Uh, keep him from the evil one. Order his steps in your way. In Jesus' name. My God, somebody give God some glory. I'm going to let y'all go, man. I'm going to let y'all go. I'm telling y'all always do this to me. Praise the Lord. I love you, church. Tomorrow night, revival begins. This, this is a church. This is for the church. This is for the church. You know what I'm saying? Tomorrow, bring somebody up in tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've had a little, I've been, I've been really dehydrated, but I'm, I'm going to get hydrated. I'll be ready tomorrow. Y'all all this traveling, but I'm, I'm going to get ready. Be ready to get y'all coming full force. You know, my goodness, I love you, man. I you love Jesus. I always tell people, I always tell people this. Listen, I always tell people this. Let's go. Eternity is a long time. We're going to be with each other forever. So you might as well get used to it. You know what I'm saying? This is a long time, y'all. You know what I'm saying? This thing, this is, this thing is real. It's real. Oh, we're going to be with Jesus forever. Forever. So let's work while it's day, because the night's coming. Give the Lord praise as the pastor come. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful presence of God tonight. We have a lot of single people that was wonderfully inspired by the Holy Ghost. I'm so careful to say anything after such a good preacher. I just can't get away from this one. You didn't find God. God found you. And... For the single women in this place you're not going to find your husband he's going to find you and I love what he said about wife qualities oh where's my man I can't find my you work on your wife qualities do you have wife qualities that's what a godly man's looking for amen all right that's it. let's go from this place amen let's call out to God amen be dismissed here tonight I want to ask if Chris Fuller would you please close us in a word of prayer